Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination, cultivating true contentment, the art of living a life of quality over quantity. Visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, at our simplified URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From a Monday motivational post, recipes, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and reader's favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which is posted each Friday morning. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. And this is the second of the two episodes. If you haven't already tuned in. When you come. And this week's petit plaisir may not be a surprise to you at all, but it definitely is a petit plaisir. And I have a feeling many of you will be enjoying it soon, if not having already. This lovely list, I want to just remind you, if you haven't already stopped by the blog there are 17 posts that have been posted just in one week. This is one of the two busiest weeks of the year on the Simply Luxurious Life blog, not only in how many people come to visit the blog, but most importantly in the content you get to explore that you know will be all about Britain. And incorporating that culture into your life, traveling to Britain, exploring Britain, giveaways from British uh, British inspired goods and, and, and gifts, and If you haven't already entered the giveaways, be sure to explore becoming a top tier member as that is the exclusive opportunity, one of the many exclusive opportunities you're able to do by becoming a top tier member. And there have been five posted. The grand giveaway was announced yesterday and you have a few short hours to go enter these giveaways because I will be closing the window on all of them at 4 p.m. today, Saturday the 21st and announcing all the winners tomorrow, Sunday the 22nd. I spend 51 weeks out of the year not in England. <laughs> At least that's the way it will be this year. And the more time I can spend, the, the better. But I live in America. And I have created a home that incorporates so much of the British and French culture. But we're focusing on, on Britain this week. And I want to share with you some fun ideas and some everyday habits to maybe welcome in without apology into your life. So let's look at this list. Number one, I'm just going to begin with the one you know is going to be included. So let's just get it out of the way. Maybe go grab that thing right now. You know what I'm talking about. Grab a cuppa. In other words, create a tea ritual in your everyday routine. Now, depending on where you live, you might not have it at four o'clock as the Britain, as the Brits traditionally do. Of course, they have it throughout the day at different times of day. But that is the traditional tea time in Britain at four o'clock. But create a ritual that works in your schedule. 
create a ritual where you are slowing down and enjoying 15 minutes, an hour, whatever it is in your own company with somebody, something that reminds you to remain in the present and the benefit of doing so. So that's one and the first one on our list today of welcoming aspects of the British culture into your everyday life. Number two, a little bit of a history lesson here. No, use correct between saying England, Great Britain, or Britain, I'll talk about the slight differentiation between those two, and the United Kingdom. Now, this took me a while to learn too. And it was something that always came up when I was teaching uh, world history and when I was teaching social studies in high school. And because we Americans, we just, a lot of us just don't know. And maybe that's the same around the world, but at least in America, it is very confusing to most of us. And I will put myself in that category. So I've included, uh, there are so many other experts on this differentiation, but I want to go over it for you here in the audio version. So England is its own individual country. The UK is also a sovereign state, and it includes four countries within that state. It includes Now, this is where I used to get tripped up. Is Great Britain the same thing as United Kingdom? No, 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 no. United Kingdom, Northern Ireland, which is not part of the island that is And so Great Britain is only the three countries on the island that contains England, Wales, and Scotland. Now, there are, I've actually read a handful of reasons, and I would love for my British listeners to chime in here. The difference and reason why there is a Great Britain and a Britain, what I've read and what is included in this article is that they wanted to distinguish between Brittany in France, which is northern part of France, north western part of France, and Britain. And so they said Great Britain to distinguish between the two and make sure people knew where and what they were talking about. But Britain can be largely interchanged with Great Britain. Just means you're talking about the island, Wales. Let's move on to number three. Number three is to subscribe to either Acorn TV or BritBox or both as I do and enjoy multiple series, films, and BBC programs, some within hours of their airing. Over the last couple of years during British Week, I have sh- shared two detailed posts that were wildly popular by readers. One is The Art of the British Cozy Mystery, where I share 16 16- And in the comments section, readers shared many, many more, but I shared the 16 that I can vouch for and say I enjoy. And then I also shared 10 British comedies and dramedies I have enjoyed and recommend. So both those links to both those lists are on today's show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash. Number four is to grow a garden, no matter how large or small your outdoor space or balcony. And even if you don't have a balcony in pots within your home on The key here is that getting your hands in the dirt, caring for something, watching the cycle of how the seeds and plants grow and mature. Science, as we know, has has demonstrated that there is valuable health benefits in doing this, not only mentally, but just. I have talked multiple times about Gardener's World, which airs on BBC and is available through BritBox every Friday for nine months out of the year. Every Friday, nine months out of the year. Monty Don hosts this along with many other expert gardeners. And that means on Saturday morning, I'm watching Gardener's World because that's about the time it becomes available via BritBox um, on my Amazon Prime. And I've learned so much. And even if it's, you know, plants that I'll never grow, I'm getting ideas. I'm seeing how other people are gardening. And when they take the tours to different gardens, I just thoroughly love the inspiration because I'm not going to be able to travel to all these gardens. I did learn of Sissinghurst through Gardener's World, and I had the opportunity, I'm so grateful, to visit Sissinghurst Castle Gardens um, this last April. And I have a detailed post on the blog this week. It was shared. But again, I'm not going to go to everything that they share. So I get to see so much more of the, the gardening world through that. 
And number five is invite others to tea at your home or for a cuppa. Now, I share this because often you don't hear Americans anyway invite other people over for tea. It's for coffee or for anything else, but not tea. And I sincerely love my tea. And once people started to realize, especially when I was a teacher, that I love tea, that was they would they knew what to invite me um, to enjoy with them with their cup of joe or whatever they enjoyed. And while you are inviting people to your home for tea, it's it's a it's a moment with good food, nibbles, things like that, and a moment to slow down. And for anyone else out there who enjoys tea, but maybe they've been reluctant to, you know, let people know, or they just go along and drink coffee, they will feel more welcome because someone's saying, hey, I enjoy tea too. Whether it's at your house or a moment at work to invite a colleague to sit down for a moment, start opening up about what you enjoy in those moments where you sleep. Because tea is the drink uh, in my home of choice um, for what for that hot a little bit of caffeine to get the day going to unwind to pair with dessert whatever it might be number six is to celebrate the queen's platinum jubilee queen elizabeth ii is celebrating 70 years on the throne the longest serving monarch in the world celebrations have begun on the bbc this past weekend and the official events are between june 2nd and june 5th but it's going to continue on all of the rest of however you want to enjoy or celebrate this. There's so many different ways. I shared a link to two Fridays. And in fact, there was a giveaway for a gift commemorating her Jubilee, her platinum Jubilee um, as a giveaway for this British week. So be sure to check out the list of giveaways and enter. That's from Fortnum and Mason. So just acknowledging this milestone that's quite tremendous. Number seven, welcome cozy upholstered furniture into your home decor. That's one thing that as I customize my home, I've been doing um, every room has a piece of upholstered furniture, some old, some new, some some consigned and reupholstered. And because I have hardwoods throughout my house, the mixing and matching of the hard and soft surfaces this is one of the things I'm drawn to in the traditional English decor are a lot of the upholstered furniture and well-made too. Whether it's a reading chair, a sofa, an ottoman, things that just make you want to sit and be still and relax and be cozy. Number eight is to watch football, also known as soccer in Britain or not. Maybe you don't like soccer. It's the number one watch sport in the country. Maybe you watch tennis or cricket or rugby. I I like tennis. But I like tennis. You'll you'll have you'll know that I watch Wimbledon every year. Um, I like tennis in general, so it's fun to watch it. But I specifically like Wimbledon. It's quite the ritual as well. And uh, just join along with the fans and uh, enjoy the spirited activity. And maybe you're a big fan of a particular team. If it's any of those other sports besides tennis, or an individual, if it's tennis. And um, anyway, it's a simple way to enjoy a bit of the British culture in your everyday. Number nine is to have biscuits or shortbread cookies or something simple to nibble on when having tea with guests at your home. So just having it already made and available, you know, maybe you don't even make it. Maybe it's Walker's shortbread cookies. That's what I have in my house. Um, But something you can just simply go and grab to pair as an accompaniment to the pot of tea that you're sharing with a friend or a guest. Number 10 is to tune in via television or radio to the BBC, which is the oldest national broadcasting organization in the world with a global reach. It does cover world events 24-7 and it produces all sorts of entertainment. I think it's important to if you're not familiar with the BBC, you might think the BBC is just a news program station. Um, it's not. It, in fact, only 10% of the BBC's broadcasting is news oriented. The Great British Bake Off is on the BBC, although it has changed channels within the BBC. That's where Gardner's World is. There's so many shows that appear that you love and stream through BritBox and Acorn TV that are um, from the BBC originally. So if you, I've linked to the BBC. You can explore that. It takes you mainly to the news channel, but just know there's so many other channels that they have that are part of the BBC. 
Number 11 is watch, speaking of TVs, watch Ted Lasso on Apple TV+. Plus. Now, many of you already know that that was a petite plaisir last year. It won all sorts of Emmys, including the Best Comedy Series, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actress, um, and Best Supporting Actor. It it just, Best Writing, I believe, as well for a comedy series. A third season is going to be coming available late summer, early fall. And if you don't know what Ted Lasso Jason Sudeikis plays a, a, fo- a soccer coach or football coach of a team that in the first season was not doing very well. And it's just so intelligently written, um, heartwarming, but it also involves a little bit of the aspects of the sports um, and the players and the highs and the lows. And just the whole cast is a lot of fun. So if you don't want to watch the actual sport, of football. This is definitely a great alternative. Number 12, acquire a high quality umbrella and then use it when it rains. So I shared earlier this week on the blog of the shop in London. I highly recommend you go to if you're looking for a high quality umbrella. It's been around since then. And I have two of their umbrellas my of my own now that are going to be the key thing with an umbrella is that it'd be sturdy. So it can not just protect you from the rain, but also. And it allows you to wear your nice clothes and not get wet, even if you have a trench on. I have spoke about this in episode 329. I love having an umbrella rather than a hood. For that reason, for all sorts of reasons, of being able to maintain the style that I love as I go about my errands and business. And an umbrella actually gives you a little bit of personal space too, which I think is an okay thing. And if you want to invite other people underneath, you sure can. But uh, anyway, that would definitely be an uh, everyday way to bring in uh, a little bit of the bread is to layer with pillows. We're going back to a decor idea here, but let go of matchy matchy. Instead, Keep the same color tone. So say you have a blue blueprint of some sort, but it's really small. And I'm thinking of my sofa right now. But then add pillows that are in a large print that have a different color of that blue, but it's still the same color tone, undertone of that blue. And so they work together, but they don't matchy match to the eye immediately, but they work. And limit the amount of solids you use as well. You can definitely use solids, but don't have all solids or majority solids. Play with those prints. Number 14, I will get to in a minute, but we have to get to our sponsor for today's episode. And I'll be back with the remaining 12 ways to incorporate the If you are looking for thicker, fuller hair and are looking for a noticeable difference every time you look in the mirror, look no further than Vegamore. With help from Vegamore, get healthy, beautiful looking hair without the use of harmful chemicals. All their products are cruelty free and never contain parabens or hormones. Vegamore has something for everyone looking to improve their hair health. The GRO Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit works together to create visibly thicker hair and improve hair from the roots. Just massage the shampoo into your scalp for 60 seconds and then follow up with conditioner. It's as simple as that. I too noticed an improved difference when I used GRO Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit as my hair looked fuller and felt fuller too. With Vegamore, there is no risk when trying because they have a 90-day money-back guarantee. And even better, 91% of customers say they saw visibly thicker hair with Vegamore in just three months of use. Get the hair you have always wanted with Vegamore. Go to vegamore.com slash sophisticate and use the promo code sophisticate to save 20% off your first order. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash sophisticate. Then use code sophisticate to save 20% at vegamore.com slash sophisticate. Number 14 is to find time to spend time at the ocean side. As we know, the island um, of England and Wales and Scotland is surrounded by water. So a lot of ocean side to visit. If you can, if you are able to find the ocean wherever you live, 
even if it's pebbled beach or a sandy beach, even if you have to bundle up and wear your boots and your wellies, or you can walk barefoot, do so. It holds you in the present. It was restorative in so many different powerful ways. There's a reason why people would go to the ocean side or doctors would prescribe going to the ocean to take in the ocean air because it does have a medicinal effect on the mental well-being of those who get to visit. I feel fortunate to live in Oregon. We can hop over the coast, um, still a decent drive, four and a half hours, but it's a lot closer than many other states and and we can't control where each state is located. So I try to take advantage a couple times a year of getting over to the Pacific Ocean. So if you can, try to find time to do that. Number 15 is to make and enjoy scones with clotted cream and strawberry jam. So a couple years ago, the recipe I shared during British week was just this, scones, clotted cream, and strawberry jam. And it's just very simple, but oh my gosh, it's so good uh, to have this uh, this traditional treat in Britain. Is my eyes roll back in my head when I had it at Claridge's? Um, they served it as part of their afternoon tea that we got to enjoy back in April. And there's always a discussion, or at least there's the the, the debate is not settled as to whether you put clotted cream on the scone first or jam first, and then the other following it. There is no agreed upon way to do it. Do what you'd like to do and just enjoy the combination. It is just amazing. Um, Just so good. And I'll link the recipe in the show notes. 16, watch Come Dine With Me. And it's on Channel 4. And it is a show, a reality show that premiered in 2005. And it ran for 20, or it's still running. It's run for 27 seasons. And it's a hit. It's a big hit across Britain. And it involves just what it sounds like. There's about four people, strangers, that go to each of the individual houses. So if you have four people in this dinner party, you're going to go to four different houses, each of those homes of those people. And they're going to cook you dinner and you're going to be in their house. And then by the end, there's a vote as to whose house and entertainment and meal was the best. And the winner gets a thousand pounds. I believe that's the amount. Could, Could give or take a little bit there. Anyway, and people enjoy it. It's uh, something that if you can stream it and find a way to stream it, I've linked to the original page so you can, you know, based on where you're accessing it from, it'll let you know if you can stream it from their website. And if you can't just type in come dine with me streaming or where to stream in your browser and it'll probably show you where to, to find it. Anyway, that's another show that you might want to watch. 17 is to find your favorite color of a pair of wellies, rain boots, and have them on hand. Whether you wear it when it rains, or wear them when it rains, or wear it when you're out in the garden, which is where I wear mine a lot, or I'm working in the lawn. I have my wellies, and they get a good workout. Um, I love wearing my wellies. And and again, there's all sorts of brands, British brands, but there's also French brands, high quality brands in both countries to, to, to purchase from. And just pick a color and a size and a style that works for you. Number 18 is to make and enjoy a traditional Cornish pasty. I've included the traditional recipe from the Cornish Pasty Association. And just for those of you that may not know what it includes, it looks a little bit like a calzone if you're looking at it. Um, You have the the short crust pastry and it wraps around with a crimped edge in a half moon shape. You have beef skirt in there, you have potato, you have turnip, you have onion, and you know, you cook it until it's golden brown. And if you want to give it a try or you've done it or you love it, you know, this recipe is supposed to be the traditional one. And I've never made these before. And now I want to. That sounds really good, actually, right now. Anyway, that is a way to welcome the British culture into your everyday life. Make and enjoy a traditional Cornish pasty. 19, we're talking about food. Watch the Great British Bake Off each late summer or early fall. As many Americans know, you can watch the new seasons on Netflix. And they from the last two years, they've been available the Friday after they air in Britain on Tuesday. So they air in Britain on Tuesday, and then they air in the States on Friday. They already have started taping in the latest season in Britain, and it should be available late August or early August um, or late or early September. I always share when it's going to be live on this this and that, the weekly this and that. So stay um, up to date on those series premieres or season premieres on the this and that postings on the Simply Luxurious Live blog. Number 20, enjoy a proper English breakfast. So 
I'm not talking about the English breakfast tea here. This is the English breakfast that you really can't have every day or very often. But let me just share with you what it includes. It includes sausages, back bacon, which is not the crispy version, but more of the hearty piece of the the loin and is also smoked. It includes eggs. It includes tomatoes that are pan seared and seasoned with salt and pepper. It includes mushrooms, fried bread, and beans. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that would fill you up for the for days. <laughs> but you know, sometimes it's good to have those traditional traditional meals. And this is uh, one that sounds delicious, I have to say. Number 21, practice your French. Now, I yes, I'm talking about British culture and I want you to bring in the French culture. Here is why. Did you know that the queen, so Queen Elizabeth II, looks over the weekly menu given to her by her chef who writes the menu in French as every chef dating back to Queen Victoria has done? I did not know this. So yeah, another lovely reason how and why to incorporate both cultures into your daily life somehow. How can you welcome the French culture, the language into your life? What is it that you can do? Just a little bit every week, every day, maybe. What can you do? Number 22, practice thoughtful manners. Now there are thoughtful manners in every culture, but I think one thing I've noticed in Britain is that there is there's a across the board, regardless of class, there is an attention to these simple everyday mannerisms from giving people personal space and arm's length distance. If you can, I mean, if you're in the tube and it's crammed, obviously that's different. But if you can, you're not standing real, real close to use a fork and a knife when you're dining, to not ask nosy questions, to use please and thank you, to respect the cue, so lines, to refrain from using superlatives even. In America, we tend to use a lot of superlatives. And what a superlative is, is the best or the worst of something. So it's the top or the bottom of whatever it is you're talking about. The tallest person, the shortest person. So if you say, that was the best film I've ever watched, or that was the worst dinner I've ever had, it's it's whenever you get to the end of the spectrum and you use language to depict whatever that is. Um, so that's what a superlative is. And I do find that that's more common in American culture versus British culture. They're more reserved when it comes to labeling something as such so wonderful or so horrible. But anyway, those are just some ideas of being aware of mannerisms. And again, it's not exclusive to the British culture. I don't mean to say that, but I think it's just something that I've noticed is definitely part of the culture, which I appreciate. Um, number 23 is to make and enjoy Yorkshire pudding. And if you know what a Yorkshire pudding is, you know it's not your traditional pudding. It is what we in the States would call a popover. And they're very easy to make and they're very good. They're a lovely alternative to say a roll um, that you might put as a side to a dinner. Um, I love these. And they are very simple to make, as I mentioned. Um, just don't open the oven until the time is up because you don't want them to lose all their air. Number 24 is to welcome trays and your everyday for serving tea, meals, or any kind of course. They really kind of add a formal, simple, simple but formal touch to whatever it is you're doing. And as someone mentioned in the comments, because I'm giving away a tray as one of the giveaways this week, is they make you feel special as a guest or whoever is bringing the tray in, whoever you're serving or you know sharing that moment with. It makes you feel special. It really creates a moment and really, again, holds you in the present. And they don't have to be super expensive trays. You can you know, go to your consignment shop, a uh, yard sale, maybe you'll find one. Use them for other things as well, but know that you have trays to serve these different moments of food or beverage throughout the day. Last but not least, and I intentionally put this one at the end, is to enjoy daily walks with your pups and say hello to passing pups, whether you're walking your own or just walking on your own. The British love their dogs and many cultures do, but the British really love their dogs. And I think that's one of the aspects of the culture that really caught my heart in 2017 as I was walking around the countryside without my dogs. So I was loving up on everyone's dogs and they were fine with it. I am so grateful to have Mr. Norman and having had Oscar for nearly 17 years of my life to go walking with. 
today we just went to the dog park and here in Bend, the dog parks, there's small dog parks here in Bend, but there's some that are just acres and acres and acres. And it's just a bunch of wooded forest. Norman and I met so many dogs and we just strike up so many fantastic, fun, lighthearted conversations with dog owners. And, um, definitely part of the culture that I've incorporated into my life here that I love about Britain. All right. So I know there are many ways, many, many ways beyond this list of 25 that you can incorporate the British culture into your everyday life. I hope these have uh, sparked a few ideas for you and how you might do it. And I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. So this week's Petit Plaisir is a movie that just premiered in the States yesterday, the 20th. And you probably already know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Downton Abbey, A New Era, the second film written by Julian Fellows. And the entire cast has returned. And this is what's so beautiful about it. I love, first of all, that it's premiering during British week. In fact, in the UK, this film is already available. It, It premiered in the UK on April 29th. So Many British listeners are probably already seeing it. I've seen it already, Shannon. (laughs) I'd love to hear what you thought about it, by the way, if you want to share in the comments. But I will be enjoying this film in the coming days. But what I love about this film is that it splits its time in the English countryside and the south of France. I know. It was made for the simple luxurious life and the simple sophisticate. (laughs) But what is beautiful about this film is, yes, the whole cast returns, is that it centers around news that Lady Grantham, played by Maggie Smith, I will refer to her as a violet throughout the conversation today, she has learned that she has inherited a villa in the south of France. Oh, that is a great surprise to receive, no? (laughs) And an even more exciting and great news is that Maggie Smith does return. I was so excited to see her back because at the end of the first film, it's almost as though they're predicting or or, or preparing the audience that she may not return, but she does return. And it's her learning of having been given in a will a villa in the south of France that splits the film into both parts. So you have part of the family is going to go down to the south of France and check out this new villa. And there's all sorts of storylines that happen down there. Again, I'm talking about this and I haven't seen it, but I saw the second trailer and the second trailer shares so much more about what this film is going to be about. And so I've included that trailer and I'll share with you in a minute. But then you have Maggie Smith's character staying along with Lady Mary. They're staying in Britain And the reason they're staying in Britain is because a movie is being filmed on their property. So it's this idea that that Downton Abbey is, you know, utilizing their space in a new and modern way uh, to bring funds to to the estate. And you have the Lady Mary potentially falling in love with one of the the directors, one of the main individuals associated with the film. And speaking of love, the film begins with a marriage. It begins with Tom Branson being married. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about it. I'm gonna let you listen to the trailer. Here we go. Have you told them, Lady Grantham? She's told us nothing. Do sit down. I've come into possession of a villa in the south of France. What villa? <laughs> Start at the beginning. Years ago, before you were born, I met a man. They spend a few days together and he gives her a house. You never thought to turn it down? Do I look as if I'd turned down a villa in the south of France? A telephone call for you, my lord. Mr. Barber is a producer and director. He wants to make a film at Downton. A moving picture at Downton. But the big film stars, famous ones. I think it's a horrible idea. Actresses plastered in makeup and actors just... There is something about him, like a wild animal ready to spring. Ready to spring on you, you mean? Action! Cut! Cut! Sorry. The modern world comes to Downton. Why do you think he gave you the villa? That is where the mystery resides. Then we're off to the Riviera. And with any luck, we'd miss the whole of Mary's frightful film. I do hope that was a prop. You steer ahead. You're the captain now. They better be warned. The British are coming. 
Welcome to the Villa of the Doves. It's a beautiful place. How happy you must be. Oh, my goodness. Who is she? The Lady Grantham I first went to work for. Granny! Why did you invite us here? It doesn't look good for Papa if she felt the need to keep it a secret. There's trouble in paradise. You don't need me to tell you that marriage is a novel full of plot twists along the way. Women like us fall into two categories, dragons and fools. You must make sure they think of you as a dragon. But with that, I will say goodnight and leave you to discuss my mysterious past. It seems the public only want films that talk. I should have thought the best thing about films is that you can't hear them. It'd be even better if you couldn't see them either. <laughs> so that is Downton Abbey, a new era, now playing in theaters across the country. And um, <laughs> as Lady Grantham shared there, I would have to disagree with her respectfully. I look forward to watching this talkie. I think it will be absolutely wonderful. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. And specifically this week, we're satiating your all things British taste, you Anglophiles, you, and we are wrapping it up today. So if you haven't visited the blog and are an Anglophile and want to travel to Britain with me, want to welcome in the British culture into everyday life, there are so many more posts, 17 in all, five giveaways. We gave away, tea, we're giving away teapots, we're giving away trays, we're giving away Jubilee um, items and much more. So explore becoming a top tier member and look for a new episode of The Simple Sophisticate on Monday, June 6th. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful weekend. Bonjour. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, with the shortened URL, tsll.co. And to welcome Simply Luxurious Living into your everyday life, be sure to check out my new book, The Road to Le Papillon, Daily Meditations on True Contentment, which was just released in March 2022 and became a number one bestseller in France travel and a number one new release in France travel in all four formats, hardback, paperback, audio, and ebook. For more in-depth exploration of how to cultivate your own unique, simply luxurious life, be sure to pick up my first two books. Each are available in hardback, paperback, ebook and at audible for audio listening. The first is titled Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life and the second Living the Simply Luxurious Life. Readers can now join the more intimate Simply Luxurious Life international community by becoming members of the blog, which provides ad-free unlimited reading and access to exclusive content such as each month's A Cup of Moments video chat, tours of my home, Le Papillon, the regular monthly post, What Made Me Smile, and Saturday Ponderings, as well as the opportunity to enter all of the giveaways during French and British weeks. To stay caught up on all things Simply Luxurious, the podcast, blog post, and the cooking show, as well as receive exclusive news and an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your new month, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free monthly newsletter, which arrives on the last day of each month. And there's a weekly newsletter, a favorite of listeners and readers, which is also free and arrives each Friday to keep you caught up on the recent weekly posts on the blog. Enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a cup of morning coffee and stay in the know about all things Simply Luxurious. Thank you for tuning in today. And beginning in September 2022, look for two new episodes on the first and third Wednesdays of each month. So a small change to the day of the week, this podcast will be shared, but always the first and third week of every month, a new episode to listen to. 
To be alerted to new episodes and when they become available, follow on Instagram, the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, and only the news about this show will be shared. Until next time, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.